If you're a baker and you're thinking of getting a KitchenAid mixer, but you're wondering, is it really worth the investment? You're in the right place, you need to keep watching, because today I'm gonna break it down whether getting a KitchenAid mixer is really necessary for your baking, whether you can do it with another cheaper tool, when it's really the right choice for you, and I'm gonna give you my review of two of the models that I personally use as a professional baker. Are you ready? Let's do this. Oh, and just a quick note before we get started, this video is not sponsored by KitchenAid, I am not paid by KitchenAid, and I'm just giving you my personal opinion and experience that I've had with their products. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get to it. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Natalia Lima, founder and owner of Curious Cat Bakery, an all vegan bakery based out of Florida, where I make everything taste just like or better than the real deal. And uh, I know a thing or two about KitchenAids because they have been my best friend for a few years now, but that wasn't always the case. Before I became a professional baker, I didn't have a KitchenAid at all. And I wondered myself whether it was worth the hundreds of dollars of an investment to go into it. Like, am I gonna use it enough? Is it gonna be much better than what I'm already using? So I figured I'd do this video in case you're having the same questions and you're wondering whether you should go ahead and just get one for yourself. This is what I'm gonna cover on today's video. How much does a KitchenAid mixer actually cost? What is the investment you're going to be looking at making? Two, what you can actually use this KitchenAid mixer for. Three, when is it better to use a KitchenAid mixer over another cheaper tool? Four, I'll do a comparison of both models that I own, the Artisan and the Professional series. And five, how to determine which one is right for you or even if it's right for you to get one at all. Before we get into it, if you're into baking and you're watching this video, you might want to subscribe to the channel because I'm here every week with new tips and recipes and hacks about vegan baking and baking in general. And also you get a sneak peek behind the scenes of what it's like running a bakery, which is very different than you might think. So make sure you're subscribed and like this video. And now let's get into it. Is a KitchenAid worth it? Let's get into it. How big of an investment is a KitchenAid mixer really? Well, the price ranges from a minimum of about $300, you can find some refurbished models for a little less than that, all the way up to $800, $900 for the commercial series ones. But let's focus more on the lower end of the spectrum here, because if you're watching this video, I'm guessing you're not really quite ready for the commercial sized, all bells and whistles kind of thing. You're probably in the amateur baker stage of your life and you're ready to make an investment into a KitchenAid to get started. So for a beginner level, either classic or artisan model for the KitchenAid mixer, you're looking at about $300 to start with. Meanwhile, a hand mixer would cost you more about $50 to $60 to get started. So there's a big jump there, but there's also a big difference in the kinds of jobs that these two appliances do and what they're best for. So let's look into, is it really better to have a KitchenAid mixer that you're gonna keep on your countertop over a hand mixer or even just beating things by hand, which is an option too, and I did for a very long time. What really triggered for me getting a KitchenAid mixer is when I started doing breads because that requires a lot of arm work. You're going to be kneading that dough over and over for sometimes 15, 20, 25 minutes to really get that gluten going. And if you do it in a mixer, all you have to do is just turn it on and let it do its thing. You can do other stuff. And most importantly, your arms don't get that workout. You can get your workout at the gym some other time. Personally, I enjoy that. Some people really love going over that dough with their hands over and over. What can I say? It's not for me. But the KitchenAid comes with other attachments. So the dough hook is better for making breads. Meanwhile, you also have a paddle attachment for making cookies. And then you have the whisk attachment to, huh, yeah, whisk things. And in those cases, I find that yes, you could do that job by hand. No doubt. I did it for many years just on my own. However, there are certain things that again, are gonna take you much longer to do by hand. Can I say buttercream? Yes, you could do it with a hand mixer, for sure. Is it gonna be faster if you do it with a stand mixer? 100%. Is it going to be easier on your hands and your arms? 100%. Now, when it comes to doing cookies or cakes, I find that using the KitchenAid mixer, while not completely necessary, it is a more thorough job. Let's face it, when you do things by hand, things are gonna come out differently every time you do it. Whether you're more tired that day or whether you missed a spot in the bowl, 
It's happened to all of us, okay? It, it happens, you're human. Meanwhile, a machine does not have that problem. It's gonna operate in the same way every single time. So it's always going to do a great job at whisking. It's always gonna do a great job at getting everything out of the bowl. And it's gonna do it faster too, because it doesn't get tired. Well, it does eventually, but it takes a lot for the KitchenAid mixer to get tired. But is it necessary to do these things? I wouldn't say it's necessary to do any of those things, but it is going to make your life a lot easier. It's gonna make the process more efficient and it's gonna make the final product much more reliably predictable in the sense that you always know what you're gonna get when you put it in the machine because it always reacts the same way. Meanwhile, if you do it by hand, it might vary from day to day, from batch to batch because there is a human component to making this product, this bake that you're baking. Let's compare the two models of KitchenAid mixers that I've had and loved for years. So my first KitchenAid mixer was the Artisan series in Majestic Yellow because I got it after watching The Great British Baking Show, which I am a big fan of. Let me know in the comments if you are too. In the first few seasons, they had it in Majestic Yellow, this like pale yellow that I just thought was so cute. I named my KitchenAid Mary Berry because of it. Some people name their cars. I name my KitchenAid. I think that's a totally acceptable thing to do. So I love Mary Berry and I think the Artisan series is a great starter KitchenAid. If you're just getting started, it's a great model to begin with. The tilt head allows you to put the ingredients on really easily so you don't have to remove the bowl to actually pour things in. Like I said, I got it because I was kind of tired of doing bread by hand. I started doing cinnamon rolls and pizza dough and it was a lot of work to do that by hand and the kneading by hand. So I started doing it with the KitchenAid mixer and it was a game changer. And at that point, I wasn't even doing it to sell to anyone. This was just for my own purposes, for my own enjoyment. The only people eating the stuff that I baked was myself, my family, and coworkers, but it just allowed me to make the baking process a lot more enjoyable and less, I don't wanna say arduous because that seems a little dramatic even for me. Really just made the work of baking a lot easier. But then once my bakery started growing and I started selling to people and my capacity had to increase, I went ahead and bought another KitchenAid the professional series one so this one's a little different it has the same capacity for the bowl but it's a lot sturdier so it can handle more when it comes to denser doughs because when you have something dense like bread or even cookies that can be like a very dense hard to mix dough the artisan series is not going to handle that so well it's going to start shaking but a professional series one is going to be more sturdy and it's going to be able to handle tougher, denser doughs like that. While I can only do one batch of croissants, for example, on the Artisan series, on the professional one, I can do a double, even though the bowl is the same size, just because the professional series is sturdier, it can handle more dough into that bowl and it can do the job as well. Another big difference between the two is that in the professional series, the head doesn't tilt back and forth, but the bowl goes up and down. So you have to remove the bowl to add the ingredients, otherwise the head is just in the way. And then when you're done adding the ingredients, you place it back in, you click it in place, and it's ready to go. And then you have a lever that you pull up and that puts it in place and it's ready to go. Now, all of those are really details in a matter of personal preference, honestly. I do love the tilt head. Sometimes I get annoyed that the professional series one has the head in the middle of things. It's, it really is a minor inconvenience. What really matters, both of them work really well. It's just that the professional series handles bigger batches. So now I have to say the professional one is kind of my favorite. And yes, that one also has a name. I named it Pruly. So when you're choosing which model is right for you, focus on how much are you going to be using this and how much are you going to be producing. If you have a big family and you're going to be producing a lot of cookies, or if you do bake sales for your children, or if you are starting a home bakery, then you want to go with the Pro Series even though that's going to be more expensive because it's going to allow you to make bigger batches all at once instead of doing smaller ones in the Artisan Series because you can do various batches in the smaller one that's your prerogative to do. However, there's two problems with that. One, obviously it's more work for you. So 
you can weigh your options there, whether you like to invest a couple more hundred dollars or whether you value your time more. But the second reason, the KitchenAid is a machine, but it also gets tired. So after a while, especially if it's doing a heavier kind of dough like bread, it is going to start overheating. And when it starts getting hot to the touch, you really should shut the whole thing down and allow it to cool because there's a motor running there and you don't want it to overheat and eventually break down. So if you're doing several batches, one after the other, you're gonna have to take a break and give it a good 30 minutes for it to cool down before you restart it. So that's why I personally like the professional series better. You don't have to do the work over and over and over again, which just seems like a lot. So at the end of the day, is getting a KitchenAid mixer worth it at all? It depends on how much you use it. And frankly, that's what I had to determine when I first got mine. I had to weigh it. Is this really gonna be something that I'm going to use a lot? At that point, I was baking every other day because baking was just something that I really enjoyed doing. So yeah, it was worth the investment. Another thing that I did was borrow one from my friend who had a KitchenAid and she allowed me to borrow hers for a week just to see if I really liked it, if I really thought it was worth it. And then immediately I was hooked and I was like, yep, I want one for myself. So maybe doing a little test drive if you have a friend that can lend you their KitchenAid. I personally love mine and I think it's definitely worth the investment if you use it enough. Otherwise, it's just gonna sit there on your counter and it's gonna look beautiful. That's what I like about KitchenAids too, is that they're just kind of like decoration. They look pretty over there on the counter. So even if you're not using it, they're right there. But is it really worth spending hundreds of dollars on one? If you use it and you're a baker and you enjoy baking, yes, 100%, I would say it's worth it. Now, if you just bake every once in a while, like once a year, um, then yeah, no, that's probably not the best choice for you. So there you go. I hope this video helped you figure out whether getting a KitchenAid is really the right choice for you. If you like this video, please give it a like. It'll allow other bakers to see this video in the algorithm and solve their problems, just like hopefully I solved yours today. And I'll go ahead and put the links to the KitchenAid models that I described in this video and that I personally own in the description below if you want to get them. If you have any follow-up questions, please drop that in the comments. I will be happy to respond to any of them and I will talk to you soon. Until then, stay curious.